sometimes I feel like Sometimes I feel like a sardine I am lost I dropped a box of crispy cookies onto the floor. They were not Chips Ahoy, and neither were they Oreos. So, my best guess is they were raisin cookies, oatmeal raisin cookies, from my grandma's house. I don't know why the grocery stores took it from her window seal because it smelled very well, but they did take them, and now they're selling it at the grocery stores. $2.99 a piece. Go get them all you can. This is a commercial for my grandma. Very monotone. Oh, you like raisins? I love raisins. I really love raisins to the point where I have three raisin trees growing inside of oh, my you? bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the tub. We don't need to shower anymore. This is the wildlife. And I am a hunchback whale. What? <laughs> 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 welcome to the podcast or welcome back guys i'm christina this is my brother spencer and we just made this podcast to show that communication is key in all aspects of life if there's anything that we talk about on here that you would like to hear us talk about more of or something you don't hear us talk about that you'd like to hear our opinions on you can always let us know on our social media or if you're watching this on youtube you can let us know in the comments below we're also on spotify so if you're taking a walk with your dog or you're stealing raisin oatmeal cookies from your grandma's window seal come on man <laughs> just pop in those earbuds <laughs> and you can listen to us i don't know why you're stealing all those raisin cookies she just <laughs> fresh baked them it's i don't understand why they're at the stores but it's 2.99 okay we're also on a bunch of different platforms it'll all be linked for you guys there's too many for me to remember yeah rumble apple Podcasts, youtube spotify um raisinet.com <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's all of, it, it's basically any place where you would watch videos or listen to podcasts um except for the people who use Ca castbox fm but we don't need to go into that uh yeah so check us out on all of those we will be having another skit coming out and a lot of things coming in the future um so yeah there's just gonna be a lot of different positioning and a lot of things that we're doing as you can tell you're a little bit more intimate with us huh yeah, you're a little closer than normal. Yeah, we reset up the camera structure, and I know it hasn't been 10 episodes yet. So, yeah, uh, if you guys like to sue, um, please contact the email. <laughs> but, yeah, please we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can tell, it is closer, and it's changed up a little bit. But, yeah, we have the new studio set up with the same studio with the same carpet that had the water heater water on it. So, yeah, go swimming. If you're new here, our uh, water heater busted and um, flooded our apartment. So. Yeah, we're underwater. <laughs> we're not anymore, but we were. We are still. She's lying. She <laughs> grew gills and she didn't even tell me about it. <laughs> Dang. You also might have noticed that we have a guest on the podcast today. This is Neo. It's actually our parents' dog, but they're on a cruise right now. So shout out to y'all. I hope y'all are having fun. Um, but we're dog sitting until they get back. So he's a very old dog. He's what, 16 now? Yeah. He's still kicking though. Like he's still very active. Every time I take him outside, he just wants to explore. So, and luckily he hasn't gone to the bathroom in here yet, which is a plus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it's just coming back a lot, going back and forth, basically. But, yeah, um, I had a lot of questions for our guest today, actually. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, he's actually, he's a very anxious dog, um, so he might actually not answer your questions. It might just be him looking at you and shaking, but you can try. I'll keep it in consideration. Neo. Oh, he's actually getting comfortable now. Okay, yeah, he has to get comfortable for the questions. Oh, um, so he just had a chunk. <laughs> first question: um, Do you like eggs? He's giving me that menacing face, like he wants to come <laughs> over and stab me. So that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> he's anxious. He he doesn't he doesn't know how to be on camera. He tried it once when he was like two years old, and. Um, 
he got really scared. They he, got really too close to his face with the camera, and he just wasn't about that life. This was uh, very cool because at this time he was in third grade, and he was going to one of those beauty How pageants. Was he two years old in third grade. <laughs> she doesn't understand dog years to human years. Disregard what she just said. So he went to a pageant, and um, he came in second place. And the reason why is because. Every time he gets anxious, he lets out a little uh, fart and uh, it stinks up the room in a good way where people pass out. <laughs> That's good? It's good because then they don't have to smell it anymore, at least for a temporary time. But he has been used in uh, many of the world, the worlds, many of the wars. Um, <laughs> Vietnam, <laughs> um, Korea, they used him. He, he's the one who had uh, the gas that they were distributing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Mia. So yeah, that's his background. Um but we will get into uh the podcast even though we already have. <laughs> we'll get into the podcast. Uh the first portion of this is actually a simulation. <laughs> beep boop beep boop. <laughs> beep 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 beep. Um so yeah, uh to jump back onto the last podcast what we were talking about was uh the communication part as we always want to stay along and do um there's a book that i'm reading it's called breathe and it's very interesting because it is all about the breath it's all about timing the breath and what you should do and they have made some very bold remarks where it can cure cancer by breathing correctly now there is a truth to it because if you think about where we stem back from that's the first thing that we do we have to be able to breathe to sustain and we have to continuously do that because if we cannot, then we have to be put on ventilators or if they have people have asthma, sleep apnea, and they go into the reasons why individuals have those things, which is very insightful. But the breathing techniques are all different. You can have very fast breathing, you can have very slow breathing, and then you can have normal pace breathing. Like it's all around the realm of it. But how they describe it is very cool because when people are put into an anxious situation, there are many studies on this, if they have the right breathing technique that they can go back to, they will be able to calm themselves down within a relatively small time frame, like during the situation and actually think back logically again. But if they're going into that fast breathing, which is more, it's gonna bring more um, of a hotter breath out. That would be like your dragon breathing. That is not going to be comparable for one of those situations because you're trying to slow down your blood pressure or ways that would increase it. That's why if you wanted to bring heat and energy, you would breathe. That's what you would do, and just in did. and out, very fast. And you're not um, yet. But you don't want to do that in applicability to those situations, but you do want to do that for situations that are... <clears throat> Um, where you're at a slower pace of mind, where you like even waking up in the morning or if you've been like just sitting most of the day, like getting that energy flowing because it will get the blood moving, the blood flowing and it's, it's necessary for that, which will make you more aligned. Now, how does this go into like communication stuff? Well, we use our breath. And we take our times whenever we're both talking or when somebody else is talking and all the different dynamics of your relationships. So the way that you breathe during it is important too. And one of the statistics that they were talking about is uh, the mouth breathers versus the nose breathers. And in professional competitions, you would want to be somebody who is able to control your breath and not be a mouth breather. You want to be a nose breather, especially if you're a runner. Because once you start panting like that, it's actually harder to be able to move and go faster and get your performance upgraded. So they had a test that they did where they took CO2 levels of the patients and they would give them a certain amount of CO2 in their system, which almost is like, wait a minute, you're reducing the amount of oxygen that they have. Shouldn't they be able to not breathe as well? Well, n not necessarily. When they administer it to them, this is where they've tested athletes that are on the field and they have the same amount of CO2 and oxygen levels when they administer the amount that they have, which I believe they said like seven and a half. And I don't know what the unit of measurement is, but 
they were talking about how they would administer that much into it. And it would change the performance of the person to be like a pro athlete. And you feel like, you feel very euphoric. And it's very interesting because you can all do that just from your own breath because it is your largest like machine. It's your largest operator in this life behind water, behind food. And that is going to go into the fact of like how we're shaped as humans as well because our jaws are actually not developed out of all of the animals, all of the areas in this world. We have the most underdeveloped um, like structure when it comes to our teeth compared to any other species on this earth. And it's due to what we eat. It's due to how we breathe. So it's very interesting. And how they brought food into it is they were talking about chewing. Because people who chewed more, which ate fruit and veggies, those individuals are the ones that breathe better and have the jaws that are out. So it's just interesting how they all correlate that together to be able to form and shape how you are and how people can have longer breaths and stamina is from something just as simple as that, just from what you eat and how you breathe. It's crazy. I mean, breathing also helps people, like, if you're trying to meditate, you always just focus on your breathing or relax. They always tell you to focus on that. I mean, breath is pretty powerful. Yeah. Have you ever done meditation? I've tried, but I've never gotten really deep into it, so. Like, what do you mean? Like, what is tried? Did you just look up a YouTube video? Yeah, I just had it playing, and that's when it tells you to, like, focus on your breathing. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you have any like specific way that you went about the breath? Like there's something called box breathing where you go four in, hold for four, four out. That's normally what they do in the meditation videos. Most videos when they tell you like to focus on breathing, you breathe in, you hold, and then you breathe out. Which is a three way. The box breathing is that, but you're almost pushing out the rest of it. There's like a two piece part of the block where it's just exhaling. Because you have the first initial exhale. You're basically counting to four as well, too, when you're doing the breathing. But the slower the breathing pattern that you have, the the better it is to actually maintain the amount of oxygen that's in your body and the more relaxed that you are. But also the more that you can perform better, which is it's very interesting how that operates like that, how peak performers can work like that. But I just thought it was cool. It's been an audio book that's been kind of changing in a manner like how something like you know already like you know how to breathe but you just don't act on breathing like that or focusing on that because all these other things that happen within your life and the life's around you do you prefer audiobooks or do you prefer reading it uh that's a good question if i were to choose like if i had the option to actually sit down and read the book yes because I would want to take notes on it as well too, but I do like the audio version for the fact that it, since I am on the go, I can just listen to it while I'm driving. And it's perfect because when you're driving, you're already like circling through thoughts. So I'm not always engaged with what's on the audiobook, but at the same time, since it's playing in the background, they'll say something that catches my attention. And I'll go back through the audiobooks again and something else will always catch my attention. I had done this with uh, 12 Rules uh, for Life by Jordan Peterson. And I'm glad that I have the audiobook version of that because that was, he read it. It was like a 16-hour book just to read like out loud himself. So it was good that I was able to have it in the background doing that because sitting down and reading, I would prefer that. But it's just at this moment with everything that's being created – uh, I haven't positioned that to be a part of the schedule. Like I read every now and again, like uh, on the weekdays I'll read on the porch and I do enjoy that. And I've been able to actually take notes like self personalized notes too, because this book specifically like makes you question yourself. I've always been drawn to psychology books. So I prefer reading those in person typically. That's why 12 rules for life is g- kind of odd because it would be a book that I would definitely want to read in person. Yeah. But what about you? What do you prefer? I I can't do an audiobook because I won't comprehend it. 
There's something about, I had this problem even in school, like whenever like you would do like group reading and people would like read it, I would have to go back to reread it after because I could not comprehend like somebody else reading it out loud. I don't know what it is, but my brain just like doesn't take any of that information in. Like the same thing happens like in music. <laughs> it's so funny. Like the other day, um, everybody was just kind of like at work at their own station doing their own thing and we didn't have any music on and I didn't have my headphones in. And my boss was like, what, we, you guys don't want to turn any music on? <laughs> and I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, my thoughts are too loud, girl. I don't need music. Because even sometimes when I'm listening to music, like, I just zone out. Like, I'm just thinking about things in my head. And, like, if, like, a song comes on, I'm like, ooh, I haven't heard that song in a while. Like, I'll jump back into the music. But for the most part, like, it's just me thinking. And so I feel like the same thing would happen with an audiobook if I was listening to it. I think I actually tried to listen to an audiobook once. It's when I was studying for my um, pharmacy technician test. And I was just off in my own world. Like, I'd be listening to it, and then next thing I know, 30 minutes pass, and I haven't been listening to it. I, I don't know what it is. I, like, I have to, like, just read it myself. Hmm. Yeah, I could see the, like, loss in translation. It would be easier if it was, like, a face-to-face -face conversation, like somebody was actually reading it out loud, but you also said you had a problem in school yeah, with that, too. Yeah, I wouldn't too. be able to comprehend it. Just because somebody else was reading it. Yeah. That's I odd. I don't know what it is. I think it's also, like, I like to read it in my head just because, like, my own little scene plays out. I feel like somebody else reading it out loud, like, it, it's just different. And it's like in their perspective and like how they use their tone when they're reading it is different than how I would read it in my head. So I think maybe that also messes me up. Yeah, I could see that. And also the way that they're articulating it, if they're like slow with it or it's not at your pace where they could be reading it too fast. I could see that you would need a good speaker. And that's the hard part about audiobooks too is if they have a very monotone voice that gets boring over time, like there's not emphasis and like emotion put into it, it's a bit harder to follow along with it. So I, I've definitely seen that though. It where myself, it's been a harder situation to um, be able to process and take care of. Um, sir, are you looking for a different spot? Is that, can you sit down? Sorry, our guest okay, right he, now is He actually me. wanted to just sit in my spot, I guess, because now I have to sit like this, so I'm not sitting on him. Or you can just push him off. But we don't do that to our guests here until after the show. <laughs> <laughs> we treat them nicely on camera, and then as soon as those cameras turn off, we throw them off the balcony. Yeah, you should see what happens after cameras. So let's sh show footage of what happens We'll afterwards. do a behind-the-scenes look. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God! It's just a video of you falling earlier. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> well, actually, they're already going to see it because it will be inserted in between. I didn't send you that video. Do you want that one? Oh, yeah. You can send that okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Because that one wasn't included with the skit. Oh, man. I didn't that buy That was the... just the test. I wanted to do the bundle package. We were, <laughs> we were testing the audio. Yeah. I want to buy the bundle package if you have it available. Okay, that's going to be a million dollars, sir. Oh, okay. That's way too expensive for me. Actually, I'll just slit your throat and take it. They have that on air. They're like, well, if she gets murdered, we'll know. On Disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> you starting a new show? Actually, I think that's that a show. That is a show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, um, start one. I mean, continue, of course. <laughs> I just hop on the show. I become their new host. They're like, when did we get this guy in here? I don't know. He just kind of walked in. I thought he was homeless. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because he was carrying around this like bag and it kept having like something inside saying, Gary, come home. We're not sure if it was a stuffed animal or if he was just delusionally carrying a pet snail in there. We don't know. That song was such a bop though. Gary, come home. Like he was so sad. Yeah. Made and you want to cry. Well, I think I may have on the first one. Probably did. Yeah. There's usually that. I think, like, with movies and TV shows, there's definitely, like, scenes and areas where it's, like, 
you really feel the emotion because you're you are with them in a manner you are following what they're doing and you're just like how could that happen to them? what tv show or movie like absolutely tore you up and you were just like i can't interstellar don't know what that is no what this is the one with uh where matthew mcconaughey goes to space and his daughter is back at home and he's traveling like he he's trying to figure out like the answers of how to communicate to her in like the fifth dimension and he has this book that he pushes forward but over time she like figures out and uncovers the story of like who he is uh in like what he went to space but like what was the message what did he want her to do and she kept putting all the stuff together and it was the final scene where um which this is not a spoiler this movie's been out for a while where the earth is like shaped to where like if we were to look up into the sky it would be curved but there were you could live up there like it was all a part of the same world like i guess gravity's like effects would be differently again this is sci-fi so this is not based off of something that is entirely true but it's a great representation of it the reason why it's sad is because like the race to find out like what he did like she had spent so many years trying to figure out like when he would come back and he was on this planet for um like an hour but it equated to like 70 plus years in earth's time and that's where like breaking that time frequency is even crazier because when we do start doing this as a society when we start being able to understand not the time travel thing like ha ha he he it being fake like actually being able to warp time because it's already possible in this realm to warp time and why is that possible because when you go to work there are days that are fast and then there are days that are slow, right? Yeah, it just depends on how much work you have. Right, but it's not just always about that. That's not the only factor. Because you could have a lot of work, but then feel like very slow. But then you can have the right amount of work, and it's flowing. But it also depends on your mindset and state when you go into that place. Because that's how you perceive time. There, if you enjoy it, most likely time will go by faster. If you're not, time will go by slower because you're more anxious about it. There's more thoughts. There's more things being put into a smaller amount of time, which makes it seem so much longer because so much information has been downloaded into you to be able to see that. So that's, that's what was happening with her is her putting all this stuff together and actually getting to see him when she's on her deathbed. But he finally found a way to come back and see her again. It's just, it's very touching because she ends up dying afterwards too. But he completed the mission that he wanted to complete. So that would definitely be the movie slash TV show. It's not a TV show. It's the movie that definitely would be up there. And I mean, there's a lot of them, but that's one that I definitely remember because it's just, it's when somebody really takes the that road untraveled and actually completes the mission that nobody thought was possible. It's just that is where that's where the tears are going to come from me is like those are achievements in anybody's life in anybody's story. And it's just beautiful to see that. It's not like the other types of crying like, oh my God, he doesn't love me. Now in the future, will that be something? I don't know. I guess it depends on the relationship. <laughs> <Who's this he? laughs> huh? Who's this he that you're so mad he doesn't love you? I did when did I say he? You said he. You're like, I'm so mad he doesn't love me. Oh, oh, because I was like making what most romantic movies are where the woman is like that. That's what that's what happens. It's always about some love story thing and then he does something and she's like, I don't want to be with you anymore. And then she takes a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> oh my God. What type of shows or movies it's, are you watching? Uh, let's just say that um, these are all the ones that you've seen and recommended to me. <laughs> what is your show slash movie? You probably have both because you watch oh, a lot. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> all of them? Even I'm Mythbusters? <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, there's too many. I cry too easily. 
I would say, I guess, the most recent one that I cried at um, was the show Firefly Lane. They only have, like, two seasons. Um, but that last season, like, every episode I was crying on. Basically, these, like, two friends, like, they've been friends pretty much, like, their whole lives. And uh, one of the friends, her mom, in and out of jail. She's a drug addict. Um, but the other girl, like, she had a pretty stable family home life. So, like, they were really good friends, grew up together, started, you know, working together. And then, obviously, like, life happens and they get in a fight and they stop talking. And uh, one of the girls ends up getting breast cancer. And um, so that's what kind of like brings them back together. But uh, her friend ends up like dying in the end. And it's, it's so sad. Like the whole second season, like every episode just made me cry. Dang. So she wasn't in the second season or she was? No, she was. She was still alive. It was the very last episode is when she died and they were at her funeral. Was the uh, cliffhanger to season two when she got cancer? Oh gosh, I don't remember. Because I would think that would probably be the transition. They would leave it off on a cliffhanger season one, so she gets cancer and that was revealed in the last episode, and then they carry on to this Well, it season. wasn't revealed in the last episode. Like, throughout season two, like, that's what she struggles with. Because when she first finds out... She can't contact her friend because her friend went to, uh, she's like a newscaster type of person. Oh, it's the beginning of season yeah. two. That, that, okay. She's like a newscaster and she goes to like, uh, I think it's like Alaska or Antarctica or something. So she has no like cell service there. So like this whole time her friend's trying to call her to let her know like, hey, I need you. Like I have cancer and she's not picking up because, you know, obviously she has no service and it's not until she gets a place with service and, like, listens back to the, you know, voicemails. I don't think she tells her on the voicemails that, like, she has cancer, but she's like, I need you. And that's when she comes back and, like, finds out. And they end up spending time together, and they thought she beat it. Like, everything was gone, everything was clear on the scans, and then it ended up coming back. And she, she didn't make it that time. But, yeah, it was really sad. Dang. What about movie? I don't think I can think of a recent movie that made me cry. I feel like I don't watch as many movies. For some reason, it feels like more of a commitment than a TV show. I agree. And it's, I mean, it's limited, but also, like, it's very emotional fast. Like, because they're com it, you can combine, like, whole seasons inside of some of the movies that they have. So, I, I could definitely see that. Like, they've done that with all the, like, Star Wars stuff. They have sideshows for it, and it's continuously still rolling as a thing. Yet, they have so many movies, and they're long. Same with the Harry Potter series. Yeah, but they don't have any TV shows for Harry Potter. It's just the series. Are you sure they don't have any kid shows? I mean, I, I don't... I'm not a kid. I don't watch that. I don't even... I don't even think I've seen all the Harry Potters. Is there a Harry Potter TV show in development in HBO and Max? The show is based on seven books. Oh, yeah. So they're developing one. Each season is resumed. Um, so that's great. So there technically isn't one. Target's 2026 premiere. That was by Forbes. In fi oh, they announced it. What? They announced, okay, yep, we're going to come in with the ads. Nobody. Yeah. I saw that the CEO said that they announced it. But it's probably not the original characters in it. It's probably like other characters. That oh, there it is right there. here. It's slated to premiere Max sometime in 2026. CEO David Sullivan announced the news on the company's Q4 earnings call on february 23rd this year so yeah they're so they've been talking about it it's kind of like how instacart didn't go public for a while like they were supposed to go public back in like 2018 but it took them all the way till this year to do it so i assume similar thing but the other thing is um hasn't she gone through a lot of heat jk rowling uh i guess so that's what I've heard, at least. I mean, I've heard 
very little just because I haven't, like, I'm not a big Harry Potter series fan. Yeah. I haven't seen all the movies, haven't read a book. I had a friend that was, like, obsessed with it and had me watch the movies, but we didn't watch all of them. Yeah. I mean, they're long. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure, I, I think she's under some type of heat. It's probably about something she said. Yeah, I mean, that's what it had been previously. And I think that's why it had taken a second to go with it because it is based off of her book, so they have to make a contract, I would presume, and all of well, that then stuff. And she probably gets paid from it. Oh, well, 100%, yeah. And that's the issue is that they're having to negotiate with her. This is kind of like when the writer's strike thing happened with AI, just a different, different perception and idea of what's going on on each side. So, yeah. Well, the writer's strike was them feeling like they weren't getting paid enough. Like, actors are getting paid more than them, and they're the ones that are writing the script. The problem is the AI is not getting paid, so. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> what do you think they would use their money on? The AI? I don't... More robots. <laughs> <laughs> they're like i'm gonna go buy a microwave transform it into my son <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna become a transformer <laughs> <laughs> you really optimus could. prime here i come <laughs> yeah i don't know um that's what's interesting about our monetary system is that with that change i feel like somebody's gonna have an ai that tries to target like crypto or something where their whole mission is to take everybody's currency Ooh. because i mean that's the the devious side of it is that the person who is able to work with the ai like once they make it functionable to where like you have a mr gutsy in your living room and you can have him <laughs> doing chores and using his chop saw whenever an intruder comes in <laughs> then um you can really get stuff done too bad he keeps going down yeah, he keeps going down. Well, he goes unconscious, thankfully, instead of dies. So anytime that like he gets hit by anything larger than him and he seems to be dead, just walk away far enough and uh, don't be seen by anybody. Make sure you're hidden. Don't. And then he pops back up randomly. <laughs> yeah, he'll pop back up and start fighting because he <laughs> he wants to win the battle. <laughs> he can't win against the sentry bot. <laughs> yeah, he can't take him down. You say you can't take a pound? <laughs> yeah, a quarter pounder, that is. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fan, though. A huge fan of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be interesting because, like, the Mr. Gutsy bots and any perception that's been on each game and each movie, like, it's going to be a combined thing of all of them, but always something new, something that we haven't seen because... I mean, that's just how life is. I mean, that's how movies work. You have an imagination. You put it toward what could be possible. And sometimes they have link-ups where the Simpsons have predicted things, how Family Guys predicted things, like different cartoons, different TV shows, different movies display what can happen, even music, because that's a part of us is we can see into the future a certain amount and it can affect our present in a good way too because once you learn how to like manifest, which has been happening a lot recently, at least for me and others that I know around me, it's possible to create some of these things to move on to the next step as a civilization, which I think we talked about in the last episode, which is space. We may have not, I may have talked about it with somebody else, but that's where the next mission and goal is for people is space and seeing a whole different like area aren't they already talking about like sending people out to mars to build civilization on that planet yeah they did um i haven't heard too much in mainstream about it since they've discussed that and that had to have been like a year ago because it was a larger they've been thing talking about this since we were in school oh 100 percent. but like actually getting into the point of like moving stuff into there like we're doing better with getting rockets up into those areas but it's it's very costly in resources and also is there a better way that we could possibly go there or should we go there next is even a larger question because we also haven't discovered a lot of the opposite side of us which is going inward which is not only the to Earth's the center crust. 
like journey to the center of the earth probably motivate a lot of kids to start taking a tunnel in their backyard <laughs> but, <laughs> but going into there and like discovering our oceans and our volcanoes and all of that like there's people doing it it's just a lot more work has to be done in those areas too because we don't fully comprehend like what is actually at the bottom of the ocean and how it can be used as a resource frogs. as well frogs said rocks well maybe i mean maybe but yes some rock formation but it's more about like what lives down there frogs <laughs> i don't think so you don't know i just don't know why frogs would be the ones that would be down it's there. a different type of frog species though oh so you're talking about it's the... like a frog fish Okay. He, he's got like the f top half of him is a frog and the bottom half is like a fish. So he can swim. But he can also jump off of things if he needs to. I think the main thing with that is like if he can do all of that, how did he genetically be able to do that? Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> You're claiming. <laughs> His name is George. <laughs> he hits me up on IM sometimes. What is I am? <laughs> Instant messaging. I thought it was I messaging. I, please stop eating your nails. I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> I am means instant messaging, not I message. Okay, so when you're typing that out to somebody and it's not like capitalized, like I am, like I with apostrophe M, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know what you're going to say. I apostrophe M. Right, but you're talking about I am. So let's say that I just type in lowercase i and m next to each other, but I actually mean the other one. Would somebody get confused and think that I'm saying instant messaging? Like instant messaging at the door. <laughs> <laughs> because I have the spell check and stuff taken off and I don't usually press the next thing to go grab an apostrophe. I usually just skip it. <laughs> You're like, I'm not grabbing him. We're going alone. <laughs> yeah, I and M are going next to each other. So I'm wondering if somebody might think that and have like an adverse reaction. Like they call up Instacart. They're like, oh my God, this person texted me like a buffoon. You call this a business person? Oh my God, I'm using another you said one. Adverse reaction. Like they're going to start swelling up because you put I am in lowercase. Why would they be swelling up? Did they eat something that they're allergic to? You said adverse reaction. That means like they're having reactions. <laughs> yeah, but swelling is the first thing you would think of. Well, this is not. Uh, I was going to say Timmy and they the need chocolate factory. <laughs> Stab him. This is, okay, that would make sense. So you're you're saying that the swelling is makes sense with <laughs> because that. Because you put I am in lowercase. I feel like most people would just think that you <laughs> just don't know how to capitalize your I and put the well, apostrophe. It's not don't know, it's choose not to. I don't think they would think I'm that dumb. Excuse you. He's got his tooth out. But he also looks high. Not a good way to look, Neo. You're on the job. <laughs> You're doing a horrible job. I'm just oh letting you gosh. know right now. <laughs> there was somebody uh, today that told me a story about um, their store and how somebody had gotten fired. And from day one, if I was to look at them, I'm like, okay, this person kind of looks like they would do meth or crack or something. A crackhead would know. So this person had gotten fired. They stole... $1,500 of stuff in the two months that they were there. Because what they would do is at the end of the night, and they were one of the head cashiers, they would just bring out two full bags of stuff. My question is, is why was nobody monitoring this or seeing this or speaking up about it? Well, it's hard to get people to work there. That's already number one. Number two, the, like the fact that they allowed this, this this person was literally like just laughing hysterically randomly at times and then be standing up like uh, in the middle of the shift just going just consistently. So you're thinking they're tired and they probably are meth use, crack use. Eventually you have a come down and I think that's what it was during that time. 
But it was interesting because I would notice the shifts in their emotion. They would be either really energetic or just kind of like, hey, how are you doing today? It, you could tell that it was extremities. Now, you would also think, okay, maybe they have a disorder. It's not that they're doing those things. Possible. You could say that they have bipolar or they have um, social anxiety disorder and they might have taken medication on some days and not on other days. But no, all of it was confirmed otherwise because the other behaviors that follow it are the ones that you have to look for because that's what truly indicates that psychology of a person. You need more evidence than just being like, oh, they're this. Because that's like with any disorder in general. You can say, oh, yeah, this person has ADHD at such a young age. No, it doesn't. They could just be a kid who just wants to play and do stuff. They're extroverted. But uh, it, how they come to that decision, you have to do further testing. More observation, pay attention more to behavior. And that will be able to tell you that, yes, this person was on these substances doing that. Because the stealing also showed that too. Because most people who smoke meth and crack, they steal. That's just how it is. Because they go into their mind like nothing matters. I'm on top of the world type of stuff. And they gain a very large godlike complex and their ego gets very inflated to where they think that they can do anything. And they did to a certain extent, but then they get stopped. And then it starts going to where you have to hit this rock bottom state to get back up. And that person will find their own bottom. But it's different for each person. Each person's got different levels. We're talking like... You can have somebody who's out on the street, like with, has been with everybody intimately and is like, yeah, I don't really care. And then runs out in the middle of the street when there's a green light just across it and there's people honking at them and they just continue by and they're like, oh, fuck you. It's just, there's those levels of rock bottom, but you don't have to go there. You don't have to choose that route, but it's when you first make that decision to jump into doing the harder substances like that is where that likelihood increases. But it doesn't have to always be like that because anybody can change that, but they have to see why it's wrong for them. Not why it's wrong for society and like, all oh, these people are doing it. Why can't I do it like that? They have to look internally at themselves and say, or come up with like, yeah, I cannot be doing that anymore. Like you just, you can't. If you do it one more time, it's like, you just feel like you're going to die. <laughs> so you're picking up the couch you got distracted by the picking at couches <laughs> okay but the thing about change though is like that person has to like want to change they have to like know that what they're doing is wrong and that's like you know you get the question like oh do you think a cheater will always be a cheater yes and no if they believe in their mind that they're not doing anything wrong, then yeah, they'll always be a cheater because they don't see anything wrong with their actions. However, if they see that, hey, this is wrong, I shouldn't be doing this, I'm hurting people, like I'm also hurting myself, then yeah, they could change. But you have to be like, hey, this is wrong. Like, I can't do this. And cut off, bye. But they have to get to that place themselves. And that's the thing with like, you can't ever change a person. Like, they, you can be there to support them all day long and be like, hey, I'm gonna be here for you and I'm gonna try to, you know, push my positivity onto you. But at the end of the day, they have to wanna change and be better for themselves or else they're never going to. And they might change for a little bit. And that's the thing with like habits. I think they say it takes like, I don't know, what is it, like 30 days of doing something for you to like actually, like, for it to become a habit? 21. It's weird. It has like a range to 21 to a month. It, it just depends, yeah. Yeah, but you have to like... Some people can, you know, fake it. But then it's like once they're alone or they're in a situation where they're kind of like, oh, well, you have the option to do this bad thing again. Like, they'll do it. Because in their mind, they still don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah. It is the sadder part of society that it has to be like that. But I mean, that's what truly makes somebody successful too to themselves is that even though they endured all of those different things is that they still have the ability to be something else and they have the option to do that at any time. 
And the beautiful part about life is that that change can always come up. It will always come up in your head. It's like, I really want to do this. I want to make the move. Well, you can either continue wait going through your head like, oh, it's not the right time or oh, this and having these different things or you just go and execute it. You make that change. But that's where that breaking point has to happen. They have to be willing to be like, yeah, this is this is tearing me up so much. It's consuming so much of my time in my head that I have to do something else or I'm going to be stuck in this cycle forever. And they have to be the ones saying it to themselves, whether it's a thought or they are saying it to somebody actually. It's different how it operates for each situation because there will be times in my own head where I'm like, oh, I need to change this. And I see it personally where I have to do it. But there are people that have shown me that it can be another way because their actions are speaking. They're actually doing those things. And I'm like, okay, it's possible. It's possible to do that thing. But that's where like, it's internal motivation, but it's also external motivation or just stimuli on both ends and being able to transmute that energy and use it for the better instead of toward those habits or disciplines that you have that aren't doing well for you. Reflection is always the key. I see my reflection every day in the water. I'm trying to understand. Are you like walking at 12 a.m. to you the lake? You said that we were underwater at the beginning of the podcast. Oh, uh-huh. how do you see the reflection then? I just see it. Because you're in the water. Well, because I'm looking up. But you still can't see the reflection of what's down though. Yeah, I can. How? I have special x-ray vision. How is that going to help? <laughs> <laughs> I can see my bones when I look up. <laughs> okay. They're just disassembled everywhere. Disassembled? My body is together. I just see them. That's not what uh, w- uh, Wiki said. They said that you died in 1986 before you were born. <laughs> Dying before you're born. How did you find the Wiki page? I talked and to, who wrote it? It was. I cannot tell you who did, and I'm willing to die for it. But I'll give you this hint: they're very close to me. <laughs> How dare you! I didn't even know that you could type. You don't even have opposable thumbs. Okay, I think he's high. Very slumped. <laughs> <laughs> Slumped. <laughs> Probably because he needs to eat. Yeah, he just ha- hasn't been eating. And he's, neither he's... have I. <laughs> At least not enough for just how much output there's been. I feel very low energy now. And it's because we're doing this later. But I was mostly high energy throughout the day. It's just it's just been exhausting lately with how many things that I'm trying to evolve and do at the same time. But it's finding something that's manageable. And we're going to end this off with um, the thing that's going to come up that will probably change a lot. The buildup that's probably happened beforehand, too, because there's a lot of connections with the eclipse that's going to happen where it's like starting another chapter. Because whether you believe in astrology or not, it doesn't even matter. It's the fact that it's actually happening and like you get to witness it happening, but the energy will shift in a certain manner. So that large change will be coming. And there's so many different reactions that can happen because you had talked about how dogs can be like all crazy with it, but people and even animals outside might react very crazy too. So it's not uncommon for all of that to be like that, but that will be a massive change. Whatever is going to be implemented during that time will come to an end, anything that's happened beforehand. But I think the buildup toward the eclipse in everybody's lives is showing that some sort of transition that's going to happen. I don't know if you've seen it personally in your own life, but I've seen a lot of people's lives where there's a lot of action is getting taken. Like where people are like, I just have to go, go, go do these things. I'm start- I see that a lot, at least with the people that I-, I am around. And that's a great sign because it's meaning that they're trying to work toward that change and it should reflect on the other side. Because... In a way, what's happened is very temporary. Like the buildup to it has probably been like a month. I don't know the specific cycle, but personally, that's what I've seen. Like within 
March going into April, or you can even count Aries season specifically, like that involvement of like what's been happening is like exponentially like changed in people's lives around me and people that I've met and just, I guess the environment in general. So that's something I think to anticipate after the solar eclipse is some, some large change for everybody. So, yeah. But that will be all for the podcast here tonight. Stay sunny, San Diego. We're not in San Diego. <laughs> We're not even close. They already know that, too. Yeah, because you keep giving out our location. We'll pin pin on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. We're going to pinpoint it on the map. Check us out. He might. He might just drop the coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> just drop the coordinates in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Go find the journey. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's just us on a small island, but it's just us as, like, miniature figurines. And then you, they pull the string, and then this is what I would say. Hi, I like oatmeal. And then they pull your string, and you go like this. Man, I like cookie dough. I don't. <laughs> but you would do it just like that, though. Okay. Yeah. I made the puppets. You'll see them on the website later. Okay. <laughs> y'all have a wonderful evening. Day, Or night. day. Or yeah. afternoon. Wherever y'all listening to. Adios. Bye, guys. Say bye, Neil. He said, you woke me from my slumber. <laughs> I see it's fade away. You just love